<laughs> so. Okay. All right. <laughs> Changing the subject. <laughs> so. If you want to be somebody and you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and listen to Divinely Uninspired Podcast. Thank you very much for that stirring opening whoopee. Sister Mary Clarence from Sister Act That's 2. Right. So we are back with another edition of the Divinely Uninspired Podcast, as she just said. And I'm here, as always, with Penny. Hi. That was awesome, Paul. Well, hey, don't thank me. Thank our good friend. That's my favorite part of the movie where they bust out and they start singing right there. Yep. Yeah. So and, good. And halfway paying attention, we've got Pastor Jeremy. Hey, what's going I'm on? Paying attention. And I, of course, am Paul, and we are joined by a very special guest again today. If you remember the Thanksgiving episode, or if you've ever been to our church, who's joining us today? It's our good friend April. How's it going, April? It's going great, Paul. I'm I don't so think glad she's a guest. Here. She was like the OG. She was part of the original. She's like fam. Oh, so she was on it, and then yeah, she's we like need the- to bring her back more. And often. then he kicked me off. So I, oh, no, I no. was the original. There gangster. was no kick at all. She's like me and Penny, the, the uncle that you don't really want at all the holidays, but sometimes <laughs> yeah, you come around. <laughs> Whatever. Right, that's nice. You're a family. That's good. Well, welcome back, April. Thanks, Paul. I'm glad to be back. Well, great. So, do we want to? What do we want to start with today? Because I had another thing I wanted to talk about that I didn't put on the thing. So if you want to get started you, with a bonus. You just got the conversation. What's yeah. up? Tell us what, we, what you When was the last time that you all went out and got fast food anywhere? Like uh, Sunday. Yesterday. <laughs> okay. I got uh, a chicken sandwich yesterday. Was it, was it out of control, the prices? I don't. Okay, this is going to sound really bad when I say this. I don't ever like really look at the prices. Like I just order the food oh, he's and just head past no. I, I, <laughs> it's fine. No, I'm being serious. Like I don't like if that's what I want. I don't like ever worry about like. All right. Okay. Thankfully, if you have to ask the price, it's too expensive. So yeah. what about you, April? You... So I got the boys McDonald's on Sunday after church, and it was like thirty five dollars for, let's say Grayson and then my three boys. That seems high, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bring this up because my wife I think has found a breaking point. They went to Taco Bell after church on Sunday, and it was twenty five dollars. And then they wanted 28 cents for a cup of water at this one up here. Wow. <laughs> and she said no on principle because she just couldn't deal with it anymore. So well, there was an article, but I didn't want to bring the TV up because then everybody's just staring at the TV about finally all the companies are saying, hey, this isn't like middle class, low class food anymore. It's you yeah. can go sit down for dinner for $40 at Taco Bell. So I will say I don't order combos a lot. So, yeah. like, a lot of times, like, maybe the marketing works for me. So, like, if I go to McDonald's, which I very rarely do, because like my kids want chicken nuggets, like, if I see, like, Big Macs or two for six, I'm like, all right, I'm getting two Big Macs. Now, yeah. I won't eat them at the same time, because that's made me a really bad person. But if you do eat two Big Macs at a time, you should go to your doctor. But I, I don't do that, but I also, you know, I very rarely order combo meals, so I feel like maybe that keeps my price down a little bit. Maybe. But I don't know. I don't like make French fries. French fries are not, like, my thing. Oh, Ooh, mine either. That's would, something we agree on. No. Two French orders of French fries instead. Ooh, no. Oh. I do use the 20% off coupon at McDonald's on the app, though. Oh, well, And it was still 30-something dollars. I don't use coupons by principle. Oh, Jeremy. I feel like if I can't afford this box of cereal, I think this is the Seinfeld bit that I'm not, or Nate Bergazzi, <laughs> one of the two. I'm, just like, I don't, I'm not going to give you this 25 cents off. I'll just buy the Malto Mills. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So the thing they do, it's funny because at Walmart, they put the little price in the square, like how much it is an ounce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've looked at the big bags of cereal and it's like 0.2 cents an ounce cheaper to get the big bag. I mean, that's not even worth yeah. it because my daughter could eat some cocoa pebbles. And like I, the, the fact, the thing of having like a big rice bag full of those instead of a box, it's not worth the... You know, two cents. I was like, I, I do agree with you. I haven't, I Taco Bell last time I went there, I think was pretty expensive because like my kids only eat, like cheese roll ups and I did get like a, cheese I don't know, rolls. like, yeah, they yeah, love cheese roll ups. You know what I used to do? My kids don't listen to this. So I used to a lot of times save the wrappers and then I would just take like a tortilla and put some shredded cheese and throw it in the microwave it's and be like, hey, thing. I brought you a, it's literally, that's all it is. It's yeah. literally a tortilla with shredded cheese and Interesting. Okay. Well, so their mother took them and I think for the last time after church this week when it was that much, but. I used to take them, and they would each get two tacos, and they wanted just meat, cheese, and sour cream. But if you put sour cream, it immediately makes it a supreme, so it's a dollar for the sour cream to go on top. And they got the, we've got sour cream at home, so if you want to wait, you can get sour cream, but I'm not paying $4 extra for- Just drive around with a tub of sour cream for your car. Well, listen, I mean, I was that close. I was like, a tub of sour cream is $3, and I'm not- We could keep it at the church, and then you could come back here and just squeeze it on top of the tacos. We do have sour cream in the fridge. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Nice. Yeah. I'll just take a hand. (laughs) I'll get a couple empty communion cups, fill it up with sour cream. There you go. What about you, Penny? I don't eat fast food. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. 
gosh. All right. Well, that is a lie. I do. And Chick fil A is like forty dollars for our family it's every wrong. time we eat oh, there. Oh yeah, I bet. But that's Chick fil A. I mean, that's that's the same thing. I know. I was just I was trying. And Taco to Bell's like ten dollars for like a combo meal. Remember when it was all seventy cents? I know. Back in the day, you can just get nachos cents? and cheese. It's cheap. It is cheap. That's true. I could it's do that. Gross. Them. That cheese. What? I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like Taco Bell, but I just brought it up because finally. My wife's a little fancier than I am, but she said, it's too much. We're not doing this anymore. And I was pretty excited. So, all right, well, we're going to move on. I mean, April, I don't know if you've noticed, if you don't listen to, because you don't, you know, you, you, you've got your own stuff going on. Somebody's fantasy football is going off over there. It's fine. Um, Sorry. We don't do transitions anymore. We just go story to story. So do you want to talk about this Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef? I know you're a big rapper. Uh, big rap I don't fan. even know anything oh, about she it. Does. Do you even know who Kendrick Lamar is? <laughs> yes, I do. Who Thank you he? very much. He's a rapper. You got to talk into the microphone. You don't really look at Jeremy when you speak. I do love Kendrick Lamar. I shouldn't tell you. I don't know any about. song he sings, and I don't know about any kind of beef. Oh, you me sing some for you? No, I'm good, Jeremy. Right. Please. We'll get Please taken do. No. Actually, one of the songs I picked not. you all up to at Drive was a Kendrick Lamar song. And we appreciate that. All right, so well, then we'll just jump right into that. The four of us, the reason we brought April back on, not because she's just amazing, but she and Penny and Jeremy and myself and others, we just got back from the Drive Conference in Atlanta, hosted by North Point Community Church, and we learned lots of stuff, and who wants to go first with their favorite thing they got? I'm going to go with Penny. What? Why are you putting me on the spot? Because you didn't talk enough It was about pretty Best awesome. Friend. I will say that when you get to see Andy Stanley in person, it's nice, like, because you're just either listening to, to him like through Spotify or online. So that was really great. It was also really nice to take a moment to sit back in church. Like that was a really big deal for me because we don't get to do that around here very often as staff. So if I could take anything, it would be just a reminder to pause for a moment. So it was nice. Nice. What about you, April? What do you, uh, did you take away? Because you didn't get your hug. And if you saw our social media post, that was a fake yeah, but it was still cool because Jeremy, you know, when he signed us all up, gave us a wish. And so even though I didn't get the wish with a hug with Andy Stanley that Jeremy signed me up for, I did get some cool swag. So there you go. Got a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, and a book by his wife. And you did get it. You did get Stanley, just not Andy. You got a fake Stanley. You got a Stanley, not me. I didn't uh, win that one. I didn't either, but you gave it to but me. But it was a good conference, so it's so always yeah. fun. The to best part was your free shirt. That's what it sounds like. My best part was being with you guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you fun. so much. That's we had fun. And having my own hotel room. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that. Big time. And All right. Well, so I got to go to Bucky's twice, and that was pretty great. And I love that place. And I got to take somebody to Bucky's for their first time. So that was kind of fun. And so Natalie got to go for her first time. And so that was fun. I like the hotel. It was nice. Oh, my gosh. It had a nice gym. So I got to do a lot of workouts and just work out a ton. And so that was good. And did you make any friends? I did. I made some friends. I didn't make as many. Yeah, no. Normally, I try to make friends everywhere, but this was this was a little different. It was, he made a friend at the rest stop. Oh, I did make a friend, Brandon. Brandon had been working there since August, and he's he's <laughs> retired and needed a job. We laugh, so this is true. We we talked for a few minutes, and we told me about the lake. And yeah, and that you wanted to walk around when we were all ready to get home, but that's okay. You see, I'm a people person. I get the reputation oh, uh, of not a people person, but I make friends everywhere I go. I actually did make a friend at, oh, never mind, but yeah. <laughs> he really didn't make a friend. No, I did. I did. It's just a different story. Okay. Well, so my. Oh, I did like the conference though. But yeah, I, yeah the gym. <laughs> pull the, this back to The Jesus. working out, the Bucky's, those were good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was going to say my big takeaway, you know, they had breakouts in a main session and it was all good, but I've really enjoyed, but not envied their volunteer work. They had. Oh, everybody yeah. there was just so excited to see us and to help us. Like a to little do. too excited, though. Yeah, well, I was going to say, mean, I agree. And I, I do guest services. Do. I think it was too much. No, they were awesome. But it was just like, yeah. I have. If there were a thousand Jamies is what it was like. They were just they, there. No, they, were they weren't even like that. I mean, these these people were awesome. But they were like, I mean, there was a guy that gave me a high five because he, he found me a, what what is that soda I was drinking? Not soda, but LaCroix. Oh. I wanted one. And, and he was like, I'm going to get you one, man. And he like went and got it for me and then came back and gave me the high five. And I was like, that's awesome. I feel, a like, and a high five. I feel like you did this for me, not the other way around. That's but, great customer service. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And so I, I really think, yeah, from the second we got in there and they were picking us up on golf carts and you yeah, know, that was great. high five and handing out chicken sandwiches and cheering you on the way out the door. I really, yeah, it was good. And just so many. So like they, more, they had a great volunteer team. More yep. volunteers than we have at our church, probably. They had a lot going on there. So it's going to lead us into what we really want to talk about this week is all the appreciation we've got going on. 
And I know April does a lot with the volunteers here at our church. Talk about the volunteers that you work with here at church. If you uh, Cause I we just had volunteer. volunteers. Well, wait yes. till I'm finished speaking. First, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh, well, you know what? Okay. So you can say whatever you want. Cause your mic's turned down. So April has a ton of volunteers and they really seem to enjoy volunteering under her because I have one that I share with her and we fight over Elena all the time. Elena's not listening. So we can say anything we want to about her, but she's pretty great. But I thought April would be a good one to speak on all the wonderful people that we have here that help out. Here you go. I'm turning your mic back up. Friend. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I can talk now. No, we do. We have uh, very good volunteers here at Journey, not just in guest services. I mean, all around. And a lot of our volunteers do. They kind of lead in several different departments. So like you said, Elena, she serves with you. And then she also serves with me in guest services. So, yeah, we have some pretty amazing volunteers for sure. What about you, Penny? You got a lot over in the kids. We do. I feel like children's ministry is a really tough ministry to volunteer in. And we just have some people that just pour their heart and soul into the kids each and every week, like some that serve almost every Sunday. And I'm just so thankful for them. So thankful for their leadership and how comfortable it is to come in on a Sunday and know that that the kids that come in are well taken care of. So big shout out. Is that because kids are the worst? Sometimes they are. Oh, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't I, do I it. I hear kids volunteer and I think hard pass. I just kids, can't. kids are a lot. They really are. They're a lot of work. So they're you a should lot, a lot of give stuff. a high five to the a children's ministry volunteers. High especially, the ones, especially the ones that change diapers. I think oh, that, yeah. like, Mm-mm. you know, you got to change somebody else's diaper and you're just like, yeah. Kids you are know. clogging up the toilets in the kids' bathrooms. <laughs> That's right. Bathroom. They really are. They usually are running yeah. off, doing Paul's something. Flush ministry and people are coming to yelling at me, and I'm trying to run the video. I also have a group of wonderful people that work. You probably don't recognize me if you were at church because I'm always in the back with my media people, but they are some of the best. We tried to shout out the volunteers or pick a volunteer of the year when we have our annual thing, and it's hard because everybody does such a good job, and it's you know they're coming in on their day off on a Sunday, and instead of you know, participating in church, they're doing it in a different way, and it's really good to have them there. So we just got through with Volunteer Appreciation Week, and then that was followed by Teacher Appreciation Week. Penny, you also taught, teach, do things like that. What do you you think about? Teaching is so difficult. It's so time-consuming. It's not a nine-to-five. You go home and you work, too, and then you sit and you worry about the kids in the classroom, so they kind of become like your children, too. So shout out to all the teachers for just being amazing. They really are. Yeah. And we're do you, like doing stuff for them this week. Do you too. think teaching so hard again because of the kids? So it's just really we're centering on the kids are the problem. I mean, it is. Yeah. Sometimes it is. We're basically appreciating everyone that has to deal with children. We're sure, just going week by good, week. Yeah, I think it's a good one. I think that like oh, the younger kids are easier, but when you get up to like middle and high school, like they become, I mean, it's a lot now. I've heard some stories. Well, April's going to share some stories. She's up next. She actually is a teacher <laughs> at her home. That's right. It's also a school. Heitzman Academy. That's right. Yeah. Teacher, principal. It's a boys only school. What did your kids do to appreciate you this week? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, <laughs> what's for dinner? <laughs> yeah. That's what I get asked a that lot. That is sexist. How dare you? On this podcast <laughs> of all places to say something like that. I don't know. What Listen, I do. I send out a weekly menu because I get asked so many times what we're having for dinner. And so, and they still come up, even though I send out the menu through our little group Can chat. Can you adopt me? Like I'm down with the, like a menu. That's awesome. <laughs> do yeah. they complain when they see it ever? That's Sometimes okay. they do if I'm making something they don't like, but yeah. I just tell them to go make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So I get a lot of that at the house. Lily is like, ugh. Or yeah. <laughs> then Addie, who doesn't listen because she's a child, but she's very book smart, and came in there last night with a pot of water boiling and a thing of spaghetti. What are we having for dinner? And I just looked at her <laughs> and I told her to leave because <laughs> I didn't have a nice way to say what was going on were you so. making did you make spaghetti yeah i had a box of spaghetti next to boiling water yeah and she looked at me like are we talking like butter noodles are we talking like full on there was some alfredo going on oh. had some grilled chicken it was oh, some oh, butter noodles oh don't even act like um, i can eat butter noodles all the time i just i've never heard an adult <laughs> be like are we getting butter, butter noodles? noodles i was asking I like about butter noodles that's what i'm saying it's not like i fixed that for dinner i'm just saying Kids are like that. They're like, hey, can you make me some butter noodles? And I'll be like, you need to just have some spaghetti. Hey, like us it is people. spaghetti. You just put butter on it. Full disclosure, the ladies all got Alfredo sauce, butter, and Parmesan cheese on mine <laughs> because I have the palate of a toddler, and I'm not upset about it. Can I go in a hot take? I think Alfredo sauce is disgusting. Yeah. I, it's I think no, if it's made homemade, it's not. No, at all. It's, no it's just no, butter and make. Parmesan, it's, right? Yeah, yeah, butter and Parmesan and heavy cream. Heavy. Yeah, it's gross. It's Thick amazing. Cream. It's pretty gross. It's gross. Yeah. It's good. I, I like it, April. Yeah, it's good. So, you like your arteries? <laughs> My cholesterol is fine. Thank you very much. I can tell you. I just went to my doctor last week and got a blood panel. 
My cholesterol is a little high. Say it. How am I getting high cholesterol? I mean, I'm eating Alfredo. The stress <laughs> causes high cholesterol. <laughs> Good because genes. Yeah. Bringing you stress. I will say a t- another takeaway from a, an extra takeaway from drive was, you know, the community we go with. One of the fine people we went with is Trey from our church, mm-hmm. and he's the best, and he eats like I do, and I was very excited. <laughs> Boneless wings, please. Adult chicken nuggets. That's the best. <laughs> I love Trey. Yes. Got his girlfriend to order. They said, what kind of wings? And, do you have boneless? And I'm like, oh, you're ordering nuggets for your boyfriend. That's <laughs> She's a keeper, Trey. That's awesome. Because and he ate something else that was something that I would eat that's just like. I didn't know y'all ordered boneless wings. I would have had some comments. Oh, yeah. You had to eat off the bone. No. That's. Yeah. Why are you making extra work for yourself? It's the same flavor. That's how we were created. But the flavor is better when the bone is in. I'm uh-huh. sorry. That is true. It Especially is. a flat. Ooh, a mm. flat's way better than a drumstick. Oh, no, I disagree. Drumstick's better than oh, a flat. Oh, you got to learn how to eat a flat. I do know how to eat a flat. My, my children are masters at this. We got your volunteers, people who aren't getting paid to do hard work. We got your teachers who aren't getting paid enough to do hard work. And then the third group of people who are doing hard work. And, you know, for little or no credit... Mothers. And Mother's Day is coming up this weekend. So we got two mothers. We have opposite of Shaft, you are both good mothers. He was a bad mother, is what I hear from the song. April, what to you would be a perfect Mother's Day? Oh gosh, I'll get in trouble for this. No. Um, with who? Totally being left alone. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> like right. not having to cook and then having the day mm-hmm. literally like no one talks to me, like no one like makes a mess. I don't have to clean anything. Yeah, that's it's glorious. That would be glorious. You might recognize April. She's from the Pioneer Woman. She just she's a very class. <laughs> Whatever. She's cooking and cleaning. I do cook and clean all the time. Yeah. So yeah. When she had her children, she was just barefoot in front of the wash tub. No, so like, definitely not. No I washer was not dryer. Made for that time out there in the river. No, just suds enough a a washboard. I do can though. Oh, that, see, I mean, you're hitting the highlights. And garden, so there's that. Listen, that's nice. It's nice to know the roles in the family. Shut are up. Penny, what about you? I'm probably going to get in trouble for this one, but I would love to sleep in on a Sunday morning. Mm. So, yeah, I'll be here, though. I just meant, like, it would you be nice You can sleep, sleep in. in. You don't have to be here till 10. No, that's not true. That Anyways. is sleeping in. Rolled in at 10.05 with your coffee? It's Mother's Day, everybody. Don't worry about <laughs> Penny, it. Penny, what's your idea of sleeping in? How late would you sleep? Probably, like... 10, 9, 30, mm-hmm. 10. You That's would great. sleep till 10 o'clock. Yes, my body amazing. won't let me do it. How oh, do I would make my body do it. I wake up at 645 every morning. It well, doesn't women matter. need more sleep. It doesn't matter what's going on. I don't have to set an alarm. That's science. <laughs> it is. I swear, look women it up. We need... use more of our brain than you all. So we do. it is true that what, look we, do. we need up. more sleep. What? Where did you get these? It is a, did I you read find it, this on no. TikTok it was, or Instagram? I don't even use TikTok. Thank do you Do you use more of your brain because there's less of it? So okay, you know, ha ha, mister. We use more of our brain because we use both sides of our brain, according oh. to the article. And therefore, we do who, scientifically who need more article? Article or Google it, I promise you. <laughs> Google it. An article. I, I don't have my phone or I do it now. All right. Women just need more sleep. Yeah, we do. Women. We do more. I'm you know, we're mentally challenged more. What? There is no science behind the fact mm-hmm. that you need more sleep than there. Me. I promise there, you there is. Listen, there is. You could have gotten away with it if you didn't say science said it. But okay. now Science did say it. I so promise you. So first of all, sleeping until oh, 10. Oh, okay, no, oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. All right, go ahead. Let's look at this solved. We've got a big thing here. April, our guest, family, friend, co-worker <laughs> is correct. Oh. According to Two. the Sleep Foundation... Women woo, woo, need woo, woo. eleven minutes more sleep. Oh, each eleven night than minutes. Men. So okay. Apologies to April. It's still more. Well, sleep. What is average? What hey. is average? We're Some not... experts say women need twenty more minutes of sleep than men. Mm. Oh, I'm going to go okay. twenty-five. Now let's go back to this sleeping until ten o'clock. It was probably right. a man that wrote that, by the way. Let's go yeah. to this. because you want to listen. It's science. So it's you only need eight, So you need eight hours <laughs> of sleep a night, right? So like that's like Who's what we're eight told. Hours of sleep we, you'll, you'll, like, know, maximum eight hours of sleep. Anything over eight, they say, is bad for you. So, if you need to sleep until 10, that means you're going to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so. All right. Sounds great. Yeah. Stay um, up late. Party at nighttime. Yeah. I, I'm Team Penny on that one. You're going to stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning, unless a Taylor Swift album's coming out. I'll <laughs> That's stay true. up till 2 o'clock. That's you're going right. to have conversations at 3 a.m. Yeah. Why not? Who, Living our best life. That seems like insane. Well, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. What time do you go to bed at night, honestly? Mid- midnight. I wake up okay, at 6.45. Okay, I go to bed about midnight, too. I'm like a I'm like a robot. I go to bed at midnight. I wake up at six forty five. I go to bed between twelve and twelve thirty and get up around eight eight thirty. <laughs> Just I in don't kind know of this. Being. You are really living the dream over there. I My am. Goodness. Aaron asked me all the time if we can trade, hey, trade jobs. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys this. So you're supposed to be in at what eight thirty on Sundays. 
You guys can both come in at 8.45. You get oh, 18 wow. minutes. I usually don't even show you up till 9. I'm, just, you get, <laughs> I'm giving you 15 more minutes no. of sleep. Because Jeremy, that study just said you need it. So He's I'm giving letting, you four extra minutes. Listen, I don't even show up on Sunday until like 9.10. <laughs> Well, I mean, mentally, you don't show up till a second service. Whatever, I, Paul. I've watched, Whatever. I've watched the comments on the Facebook. I'm, just I'm trying, trying to, to do 15,000 things I'm trying to give you all your extra you. sleep. I want you all to have it. Wow. I want you coming in half-functioning. What if? So you can we take all, care of all the children because I don't want to mess with them. That's bless right. bless exactly. them with going to bed 15 minutes earlier. Yeah, go to bed earlier. No, that's not fun. What time do your kids go to bed? Just whenever because they're old? <laughs> yeah. Well, it just depends. Isaiah is very good at staying on the schedule, so if he goes to bed earlier and gets up earlier. They're also homeschooled, so they just... Yeah. They just so we were very rigid children. with their schedule when they were in elementary school, but now I'm like, you know what? Get your work done, and I'm good. So... Yeah, these people whose kids go to school at like 5, 5.30 in the morning on the no bus, way. those are the real heroes out there, the ones that are making that happen. So... Good job, teachers. Good job, mothers. I have a little Mother's Day trivia for you, but I, I lost it because we were looking <laughs> that up. So... We're going to do that, though. Do you, let me see. Y'all talk amongst yourselves for a second about mothering, and I'll pull this back up. About mothering? You're going to let Jeremy talk, like, have a conversation? I'll talk about about mothering. Yeah, Yeah. let's talk talk about about mothering. Let's do, Jeremy. Tell us about mothering. I think it's good. (laughs) (laughs) I will say, I re-listened to the last one April was on to prep for this one, and Jeremy got in a lot of heat for his Thanksgiving tree, and it was one of my favorites, backing out of a corner. It's Christmas tree that's up at Thanksgiving. It's a Thanksgiving tree. It's fun. Okay. My Christmas tree's up at Thanksgiving. Yeah, see? I can, yeah. Yeah, no, I, that's not the point. The point was that you argued all right, well, with us. Oh, that's right. Okay, about about it being not, a Thanksgiving tree hey, instead of Christmas tree. I don't know if you know tree. this, oh, but I'm very stubborn, so I'm probably mm. going to argue a little bit. You are very stubborn. I'm not. April's I'm just a liar. I'm just pretty <laughs> April's, stubborn. I'm just not. a liar. The two of you are just liars. No, we are slightly, I'm slightly stubborn. I am, that's what I I'm pretty stubborn. All right, what's this quiz? All right, so, well, <laughs> I, you know, it turned out to not be a quiz. We're just going to get some fun facts about it. So, if you... And me and Jeremy can attest to how difficult it is working with the fair sex here. The woman who started Mother's Day, Anna Jarvis of Philadelphia, she then filed a lawsuit to stop the over-commercialization of it because she yeah. really, she said, I want to be celebrated, and then said, not like that. So we were off to a good start. Let's see. I don't know. I like gifts. I'm kind of all for it. <laughs> well, okay. I think it's good how to have one to, day. How are you supposed <laughs> to get a gift if your whole family is supposed to leave you alone? They give it to me, and then they leave me alone. <laughs> what if the gift is just leaving you alone? I like That's that a one. Great gift. I love that one. <laughs> yeah. So see, everybody. Wins. I mean, I love my family dearly, but the amount of questions I ask, I answer a day is absolutely exhausting. What do you normally get for Mother's Day? Oh my gosh. Well, Aaron usually gives me cash because he knows I like to shop, and then <laughs> Isaiah usually gets me a Starbucks gift card, oh, which is why I have a hundred dollars on my Starbucks account. Yeah. And wow. then I'm always curious, like what other moms get yeah. for Mother's Day. I usually get some kind of flowers, some yeah. kind of meal out. What do you get for Mother's Day? I normally get, like, we'll go to the nursery and pick out flowers for the house. And that's my Mother's Day gift. Oh, yeah. I love it. So I get to pick whatever I want. So and the rest then of the kill year, it eventually down the road. The rest of the year, Terry's like, nope, my right. house. The man's man gets to pick out the flowers. Is that but what? <laughs> There's no other flowers well, in between. You said I get to pick whatever I want. Like, I do usually, get to pick whatever I want. Is that not the usual rule at the house? I mean, there's only one time a year that you generally get flowers for the house oh, in the spring. Well, so it kind of works out. You're in a different house than I'm at because... What about fall flowers? People do that thing. What are those oh, things I do everybody sells? Mums. mums. That's I do I'm like mums. mums. I do that too. You know, I like the big basket that Yeah, they're like, pretty, yeah. but they die. I would really have fake flowers. All, fl- hey, all flowers die, I tell you that. I know. That's Once why I want you cut them, ones. they're kind of dead, right? They're just a good looking corpse for a week or so. Yeah. Yeah. You can eat them. Yeah, Make no. tea out of them. I'm good. Jeremy, what do you what do you usually get for Father's Day? Uh, random stuff. So we just, it's my favorite actual thing. I don't ask for gifts because I'm an adult, so I just buy what I want. But they, the kids just go to Walmart and just buy me whatever they, usually it's stuff for them that I have to do with them. <laughs> but uh, a lot of water guns, get a lot of water guns. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. A lot of water balloons. That just means. They sometimes buy me candy that they like that I don't <laughs> like. So it's, but I don't care. I mean, and, and I know I don't wear a tie, so they don't give me ties. And I barely, barely wear socks. I mean, I wear like no show socks, so they don't give me. I mean, so yeah, it's just these like water guns, water balloons. And that is what fathers, how we're treated. Yeah. I would love a water gun and some water balloons. That sounds fun. Are you listening to kids? Penny would love a water gun for I Mother's would. Day. To water all your flowers? Like <laughs> I will just soaker? sit on my back porch and like shoot my kids with it. Or they'll give me like grilling tools. Like they know. I mean, they do like, I mean, they like Father's yeah. Day stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I can cook them dinner that night. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it's Father's Day. Make a sabachi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Wow. Well, so like if you got a pound of flour and some sugar and Shut some milk up. and they're like, here you go, mom. All your favorite things. <laughs> Make you a pound use. cake. Yeah. We're all very hungry. 
All right, there is some trivia here. I'm going to skip on down to that. We're going to skip the first one because it is very uncomfortable doing some math. But how old would you guess the oldest mother on record? Not Bible times, but like birth certificate to give birth. Yes. Oh. Well, not the oldest Didn't we just mother. ask this question? I would say 60. No. I'm going to say. I'm going to say 64. I'm going to say 70. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 81. It was ju- That's really old. <laughs> it, was just, it was just 65. Penny was really close. She she went under that saw win. But that's not any yeah. rules of anywhere, and you missed it by so many. That is very interesting, though, to be 65. Like, I would think menopause would have been best. Well, I think they had probably thought that, too, except they were conceived using eggs from her niece. Oh, well, that's different. That's different. I, I was more under the impression of naturally. Is a C-section not a real mother? Is that what no, you're saying? No, I've had three of them. It definitely is. I'm just saying. Yeah. Do you call you know. it taking them out of the sunroof? That's what they called it on Bluey, and I about lost it. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I had not either, and I was like, this is on television. I love it. Oh, on a kid's TV show. So All right. <laughs> Something I learned new today. There we go. Uh, oh, man. I don't know if we should do this. this I'm is, not going to do th- Listen, all these are so uncomfortable. This seems like it's getting weird. So, okay. I will say one thing I like that we do this, at, or we don't do at this church, that we used to do at the church I grew up with. They would have, and I'm doing air quotes, awards for. We do that. Whoever's the, been the mother the longest, yeah, who's the newest mother. The best yeah. mother, is that true? I did that at the, the IF the conference. Newest. Oh, newest. Okay. Yeah. We had, it It was, well, like what I'm here. Who is the youngest mother? And then it started to get oh, real it uncomfortable. Get real and people started going, oh, no. And then, <laughs> but I do uh, like the Nate Bergiasi joke about, like, you know, you're watching Teen Moms. And he's like, they, got, they had it figured out. I mean, because you think about it, you have a kid at 15 years old. By the time you're 30, they're gone. And like you got like your um, whole yeah they're like, not gone yet. Hey, fun fact, you've told that before on here. <laughs> Sorry, Paxton. <laughs> you, you, we've talked about this before. Hey, fun fact, I love Nate Bergazzi. I'll uh, tell his jokes again. Okay, oh. I'm like I've heard you this just, before. You just sat down there. All right, <laughs> look pretty. <laughs> just imagine about your your hours of sleep you get to get this weekend. I know. I'm gonna show up at 9:30. I've already told you 8:45. Mm. If you guys show up before 8:45, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, Jeremy. All right. Well, hey, you almost called him the wrong name. All right. So we'll get into the, the other part of the podcast now. I thought it was very interesting, and it's another thing from Drive that I think they do a good job of blurring the lines. But I was reading an article this week that it's not going to be on the TV, but where people are discussing the difference between praise and worship. Because one of the big things that they do well as a church is their music. And our music is great here at church, but, you know, this is on... A different level of it and people I think some people take it they don't care for it you know that kind of over they would call it overproduced and that's not my personal take on it I, I enjoyed it I think it's good for what it is someone in one of the groups said it real well that they are in Atlanta and they have a certain like expectations from that part of town and that part of the country where if you want people to come in you can't just have you know volunteers come up and play guitar and sing and miss notes and do whatever because people expect a little bit more of a show but you're our guest today what do you think about praise and worship and what that means to you what do you what do you take from that april i love praise and worship more specifically worship i was gonna say these are two different things so they are definitely it's definitely my jam so i would say more than anything i listen to worship music it's very special to me However, I cannot sing, <laughs> so I can't, I can't, you know, speak on behalf of the people who are up there, you know, so singing every week. But. Before we, I think it's a good, I do think oh, it's a good. Go. No, here I, we go. Here I, we go. I, what I need to know is what is this article or what are people saying is the difference between praise and worship? Okay. Well, that's a good, that's a good. Because I, I know good. the root of both of those words and I would mm-hmm. say they're not different. All right. Well, so with that, we call it worship music, but. Yes, I call when it praise music. Yes, but when, but people you never say, oh, it's time for the praise music. There's the praise yeah. band. Well, praise comes from so, worship. Yeah, I well, think it's a part of worship. Say, Jeremy asked me a question. I'm right, sorry. I'm asking Paul. So okay. <laughs> in the article that they were talking about, they were saying, you know, praise is more of like when you're with the music and you're singing, you're praising God and saying, hey, thanks, appreciate what's going on. Worship is what you do in your day-to-day life to honor God with your life and with what you've been given, not necessarily just singing but so you're talking about the semantics of like one is a lifestyle one is actually specifically talking yes. about music okay that's good 
That's what I want to know. Okay. Yes. I thought we were talking about the music itself. Well, and so, like some people were saying, oh, it's worship music. Some people were saying it's praise well, music. Well, that's also. And I was like, that just depends on if you're from a white church or a black church, because that's a lot of the <laughs> difference there, too. Black churches have praise music. White churches have worship music. What? Uh, black churches have worship music, too, because I have attended. <laughs> I have, too. I was a, lot a part of, of one. Thank pra- you. Reverend Malone was my pastor for a long time. But a lot of them do call it praise versus they do, worship. But they also do worship. Point. Okay. All right. <laughs> I need you to look at each other and tell each other something that you appreciate the other one right now. April made me a pie last year for my birthday, and it was the best pie I've ever eaten. Oh, that was awesome. That's so you sweet. could look at her in the eye next That's time. That's so sweet, Jeremy. I did look at her. He likes my cooking. Did See, you, Paul? Did you yeah. use what you got for Mother's Day to make him that pie? I was waiting for something sarcastic. No. <laughs> well, that's no, nice. So it's fun because I always get a lot of people to ask me, you hey, do you Jeremy. and Jeremy really like each other? Yeah. <laughs> because we pick on each other all the time, and I'm like, of course I do. But I would say, honestly, one of the things I appreciate most about you, Jeremy, is I love that you really helped me look through scripture in different lenses. Like I tell people that all the time, like seriously, like spiritual growth wise, like coming from the background that I came from, like you would have like very specific beliefs. And Jeremy was the first to kind of really, well, maybe not the first, Jason Isaac kind of did that as well, but kind of, you know, make me see things differently. And I appreciate that because now I I think I look at scripture through a different lens, which has really kind of helped me not only grow, but the way I look at like community and stuff. So I would yeah, say that's what I, I appreciate, appreciate most. Wow, hers was so heartfelt. I was like, you need to pie? redo yours. I didn't know that she was coming with that. <laughs> no, no, I think I, I do. We, me and April actually do it along. We're yeah, very different. We so are. I think that is the where it seems like it. But no, I actually appreciate in April the balance that she brings because I can be set in my ways in certain ways and she's different than me. And that's, I appreciate uh, that. I'm set in my ways in the other way. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's a good balance. The average of them make a good person you'd want to hang out yeah. with. So. Well, what do you yeah. what do you think about the praise and worship as far as <laughs> we'll go back to that. yeah? It's what coming you, back to what you, what you know, think actually, about Let's penny go ahead and say what you think about me in April. <laughs> I know I what felt your, like that's what you're coming for. Say what thing you appreciate about April. What Why are we think? doing this? Right? We're, it's appreciation <laughs> week. We're just appreciating each other. I appreciate both of you all. I love laughing with you. It's my favorite thing to do, and both of you all are, are the best at it. So thank you, Penny. I love you too. Thanks. That's all you get. You should appreciate Jeremy. And for letting me come in 15 minutes late yeah, on Sunday. Uh, yeah, I, that's, that's my gift. He is flexible, too. I will give him that. Yeah. Working for him. So I'm there we go. very flexible. Mm. Yep. He can touch his toes. Yeah. He can, <laughs> he can do a back bend. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy is amazing. He's a man. He's a real renaissance man. <laughs> you don't appreciate Jeremy's sense of music? You all seem to have a, the same taste in whatever this hipster... <laughs> country like rock hipster. music it's that like, y'all listen to. It's like to. folk music. It's like folk yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. modern uh, folk. He does have really good music too. Listen, that was a whole that. lot better than the rap music that he was. Well, well you had your great. headphones in. These two listened to the same song uh-huh. over and over. They were listening to some what? Zach Brown. Zach Brian. Brown. Oops, Brian. I said Brian. Okay. <laughs> well, something like that. See, I told you I'm not good. Listen um, to the Yvette Brothers. Tyler Childers. Tyler Childers. Childers. Noah, Noah yeah. Kahan. Yeah. I don't know a lot of his music yet. I'm going to see him in like two weeks, so I'm trying to like learn he's his He's at Real Bird this year. He's at Real Bird. Yes. I'd never heard of him until this week. He's the reason yeah. I'm going to Real Bird. See, okay. he's like the headliner, and to be honest with you, I didn't know hardly anything about him, so I'm now yeah. trying to like catch up, because I'm like, if you're the guy, like I probably need to know a couple of your songs. Yeah. So. Yeah. There was a lot of that. Well, so it was all... I will it's, say, just indie, it's just like indie, kind, yeah. I don't know what you describe it, yeah. That music was good. I enjoyed it. It sounded a little bit to me like reggae, where it's all kind of the <laughs> Ooh, same Ooh, we were song. playing some reggae. But I'm saying, it was like, I don't know the difference between these songs. Yeah. I can't really That's tell. actually, yeah. Paul, I was listening <clears throat> to worship music with I my remember you had, because we were talking about you and you didn't look up or anything. Of course y'all were. I see and how it is. We were saying all the great things about you. But mm-hmm. I will go back to last week. We did listen, we got... We let Penny pick out five Taylor Swift songs to play. Yeah, you got to. Oh, my that, like goodness. It was five minutes. And then I got to sing to everybody. It was fun. If we listen back, I am historically not a Taylor hater. I'm on her side on most of these arguments. It was some of the worst music <laughs> I've ever heard in my life because she is supposed to be this amazing singer songwriter and she was doing neither. She least. did whatever. Paul, we're now, no longer best friends. I'll say this That's I have historically been a Taylor hater. She's grown on me. Yeah, and I don't. I I still think like it's a lot, and I think that like the phenomenon of her seems a little manufactured, but her music isn't as bad as I once thought it was. But I've also still would not like just like put on Taylor Swift probably ever. Would yeah. pay five thousand dollars for a Taylor Swift. I definitely oh, no. would not go to a four or five hour concert like oh, that. Sounds like heaven. Pretty awful. What if you were so depressed you were acting like it was your birthday? Would you go? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was a lot of what it's just awful. And I could not get over it because 
again, usually she's one of those people that I'm like, I don't care for. And then I hear it, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. And it grew on me all that. Uh, I mean, what do you think that means when she said that? Because I don't. Both of you all were like, what does no, that even mean? I think mean? I've gotten to the point, I don't mind her music as much. I think the whole thing is a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the aura. The obsession. Swift, the, yeah. But the music's not bad. It, it, it's actually it's not, it's not <laughs> as bad as I thought it was going to be. I wasn't like, I, I That's I, like a B plus from Jeremy. That's not yeah. bad. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. It's a C, yeah. Oh, it was bad. I'm falling further and further away from the Taylor oh, train, though. Yes. So, praise and worship, Penny. How's it going? <laughs> I mean, it's going. <laughs> what if Taylor did a praise and worship album? Yeah, I mean, that would like really that's her next play, you know. She's, she's got to go like, yeah. Got to bring back that Christian audience that she lost with all of her. Speaking of which, when we talked about, okay, never mind. We're going to go for a real. Oh, let's like, go. No, did Beyonce do a country album? She did. <gasps> so good. What? Why? Because it's not Texas and it ain't hold them. That's all I know because oh. it's on Instagram. The whole album's but. really good. It's a really good I album. didn't know the other day I was listening to a Post Malone song and then a song came up with them yeah. two on it and I was like... Post Malone and Beyonce are doing, doing a country song. song. We didn't listen to any Beyonce in the car. That's another oh, one I like to listen to. awful too. Yeah. But didn't Beyonce do a praise and worship album? Or that seems like... Because uh, I know she's like gospel background, right? I don't didn't think she grow so. up doing like gospel she music? She did. She did, but I don't think... But she now she's in the yeah. Illuminati, and they don't really like that uh, kind of stuff I anymore. So. I don't know all that stuff. She's not in. All right, so, so tell- praise and worship. We got way far away. Actually, I want to hear more about this Beyonce album. You should listen to it. It's I don't great. want to listen to and it. And she's got a lot of like, like Miley Cyrus does one with her. Oh, yuck. No. Dolly Parton. Well, okay. Post Maybe Malone. I listened to the wrong one then, because I listened to one and I was not impressed at all. But it's, I haven't it's heard good. the other ones. Okay. It's not a bad album. Ever since she couldn't pay her telephone bills and her automobiles, oh, well, that's yeah. when she was good. Destiny's Child, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, that. Destiny's Child was awesome. I used to love the, the harmonies and the music. Destiny's Child was, I mean, that's my wheelhouse, that area. Late 90s, that's that's my jams. I could listen to... Beyonce is my go-to, like, workout music. Man, good. I just, I don't care for it. This country album is not winning me over. Oh, well. But I'll, you know, I'll give it a shot. You should, yeah, you should definitely retry that. And then you can recap next podcast on what your true thoughts are. That's my Mother's Day gift from you. Is to listen to it? Yeah, yeah listen to it. Okay, I'll come in humming. Yeah. And you'll be Let me so know. Excited. We'll have a chat with it on Sunday morning. I'll have that 15 minutes before you get here. Yeah. I'm hanging out. Still I get here at 8, by the way. I don't know this 845 business that y'all are getting in, but good for y'all. Well, that's we get our not, stuff done not, early. It's not happening. Yeah. All right, so Jeremy had to step out. Is there anything you'd like to say about Jeremy while he's not here that you wouldn't say to his face? No, I'd pretty much say anything to his face. I was thinking the same Fair. thing. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. you are kind of just telling what Shh, I think. He's back. I don't think we've ever not said anything to him that, you know. Yeah, I agree. Fair. Yeah. Well, now that he's back, Jeremy, do you have any any thoughts on praise and or worship? I spoke real hard into the mic. He loves worship music. Like when we were at the conference, Why that was his favorite part. As, I, no, I do. I do. I So, no. okay. So, no, here, here's my take. And I'll just say, here's honestly my take. So I think I've talked about this before. It sometimes bothers me that people know every lyric to Graves the Garden. It's a great song. Don't get me wrong. And don't know anything about the Bible. Like don't know Bible oh. verses. Don't know his Fair. And I feel like in music is such an emotion-based mm-hmm. thing that you can manipulate people's emotions and so it's not that I don't like it. I feel like sometimes we go way heavy into that. And, you know, like, here's the thing. I've been doing this long enough. I know if I wanted you just to have a moment, I know exactly what songs I want to play. I know what music I want to be played. I know what I'm going to say to set up that song so that you have a moment. And so that's the part of it where it's like, I'm good with my words. So, like, I know how to set it up. So I think that's the thing is I'm, I want people when they have an experience, like you just, like for example, your appreciation of me was like, hey, I challenged you with like these scriptural ideas. And I think that's part of it too, is I think we know God through worship and we mm-hmm. worship God through worship, but I think there's so much more to the story. And I, it bothers me sometimes that people know more about that and less about kind of the mystery of what God is. Which is also interesting because I'll get people who will ask when I follow up with first time guests, like, why don't you all play you know, do an altar call where you play like a piano or something. And mm-hmm. it's, that's kind of the comment that I tell them is just, yep. you know, but I would agree with him on that. Like worship, I think it has to be an issue, a matter of the heart, like really of the heart in your relationship with God personally. So yeah, I would agree with that. So it's not that I don't like worship. I just think we've gone, well, and let's be honest. I mean, it was so bad for so long. Like the nineties were awful. <laughs> like it was just, and then now you've got like, you do have like worship bands and to Paul's point with like North Point. Like, you've got moments that, like, I don't know the difference between this and going to a concert. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. And I also know some worship bands, like, 
travel as a concert now. Again, I'm not knocking it. Good for you. That's your cup of tea. I just, I think we've gone really far in one direction. And so you like got that, but then you also have people that don't know, like not only basic tenets of faith, but more importantly, have never like wrestled with some of these deeper questions, which I think is the way more fascinating part of the story, less the, I'm just going to sing a song and feel emotional about it. Yeah, I think that's, so the thing with North Point is like their music was all top notch, all of it. And, you know, I mean, Jeremy gave me a look. I had earplugs in. I don't love the loud music, but I could hear hear it fine. But it is so much of a concert. So, you know, I get lost looking at the cameras and the different angles and the people on stage that are filming and the just looking at that board and going, oh, I can't even imagine putting this together. It every is week. a lot to watch all those screens. Yeah. I didn't get distracted by that because I, I get distracted very easily. But like to see, I mean, it was like 20 screens down there and where we were setting, like we had like a direct access point to like I could see everything going on. And no, so like I'm not against it. And to your point, I can't sing very well. Actually, one time they gave me a solo at church when I was like in the youth choir and my sister was the choir director and they pulled it from me before the live performance. Oh. So I've kind of just lived in that moment ever since. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, because you definitely, despite <laughs> my love for the Lord, would not want me up there singing. So. Yeah, you don't want me singing. No. Maybe. I don't think my voice is bad. I just don't understand, like, pitch and keys. Yeah. And I don't me understand either. any of this. I'll let the Lord Notes. listen to my music and, <laughs> no. and call it that. Yeah. What if, to prove a point, one Sunday we had you two lead worship and that say, is listen, hilarious. it's that would not be about... Great. That is between me and the Lord. <laughs> well, there was a... So there was... I've talked about him on here in the past. There was a Derek Webb song that was do you want the spirit or the kick drum and it was that where like you're in service and you're feeling it but are you really feeling god or are you just feeling uh-huh. this music and getting the beat and but in so fairness ex- i do think that that is part of a worship leader's job is to try to engage mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying the audience but then i do <laughs> think that has to be like i said an issue from the heart otherwise it is can i tell you my favorite moment of <laughs> So years ago, I was at a youth camp and it was like, it wasn't White Mills. I can't remember what it was. I got invited to speak at this youth camp. And the night that they were doing worship, or like they were doing it every night, but the night that I was there, the guitarist and the keyboardist could not come. So I, before I spoke, worship was led by a bass guitar and a drum kit. (laughs) And that was the worship. And I was just like, what is going on right now? Like it was, <laughs> so you do Bye. need all those other elements because I will oh, tell you, yeah. if it's just a bass guitar and a drum kit, it was pretty awful. And the singer was great, but it's like, how are you even doing this right yeah. now? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but I do, and I think that's why people like love Nathan a lot too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Nathan yeah. a lot too. No. Cause Nathan seems to really Nathan. like, yeah, uh, he's a great guy. If he could hear this, but, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but he can't cause he doesn't listen to this. That's fine. I have a good impression of Nathan. I don't know if you heard it. No. Let's well, I'm Nathan, and I'm so perfect, and everybody <laughs> loves me, and my blue eyes, and my earnestness. Oh, <laughs> listen to me sing. Uh, Nathan Wingfield, you can send that to him if you want to. He knows it. I've said it to his face. So, <laughs> All right. Well, I think that probably just about wraps it up. Do we have – we don't really have a lot of – it's spring. It's going to be summer. We're not – do y'all want to do Grinchmas in July this year? Let's mm. hard pass. No. No? No. Oh, April well, just you. about walked off. <laughs> did we cover all of our topics for today? I think we did. Was there something that we... I know last week we really missed <laughs> the main one, right, as we walked out about being stubborn. April took the stubborn test, as we and referenced. And she lied. I did lied not like lie. A dog. I was truthful. And even my husband agrees. Slightly he, stubborn. Yeah. He, the Very face he opinionated, made when he said, but yes, slightly honey, stubborn. He did, not, uh, he did not seem... I will say this. I will say that last week it was a good time, and I enjoyed our, our traveling together. It April. was fun. It was fun. It was fun, Jeremy. It, was fun. it is good to see these people. Like I've I've seen Trey, you know, at church, but yeah. we don't really get to hang out because he's young and I'm old. Same with April, and uh, you know, because I'm young and she's old. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, uh, <laughs> I, was I was waiting. for I, it. I was waiting for that. Yeah. Penny usually gets that here. So. I know. Right? Sorry, Penny. She's yeah. like six weeks older than me, and <laughs> so. Yeah, it, I mean, we have a good crew here, a fun travel, all in the same van. Yeah, that was this fun. Year. Not the Apparently, Paul did not like our music choices very much. It's right. fine. I'm kind of Team Paul on that one, but that's okay. It wasn't I mean, horrible, wasn't it? I didn't say it was bad. It wasn't like yeah. Pearl Jam, same song over and over. It was, I love Pearl Jam. I know you do. And you, I've heard worse, for I sure. I only played Pearl Jam twice because I knew you didn't like Pearl Jam. I was you considering and, you know, your feelings. And the last time I said I didn't like Pearl Jam was years ago, and it was nice that you remembered that. I remember that. I remember that. Like, Paul us. doesn't like Pearl Jam, so... Listen, you drove us all over, and I say the driver gets to pick whatever. If we'd have listened to that biopic of uh, Benjamin Franklin, I'd have been fine with it. 
Oh, he did. He did not bust that out. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. Thank goodness. Oh my goodness. Next oh, trip. Next trip. Orlando. No. We're driving. Can we fly to Orlando? Actually, real quick. You know what? We didn't talk about Top Golf. <laughs> we we didn't. don't need to talk about Top Golf. I totally Penny forgot. Won? That's right. I did win. Did you win? I did. Oh, because I think that the two men at the table. Got of your 160 points, I think like 140 of them. Okay, so here's what happened. Here's what happened. Happy April. Mother's Day. I, I hope wasn't there, so I don't know. But let's, yeah. So it was like, it was two hours. And I'm, you know, about an hour and a half. I was like, oh, I'm kind of done. Maybe you guys can just hit for me, like finish it out, you know? So both of them were going back and forth, just hitting for me. And just then I was like, I'll, you know what? I'll just hit at the very end and use the driver. And I just let them rip like, each time. And then I beat all of them with my score. <laughs> Now, okay, well, I'm first of all, Jeremy, because first of all, yeah, I was giving her the benefit of the doubt that she won. That is the no, most I, convoluted story yeah, I've ever heard. In very, just bits and so pieces like, of truth. We're playing the a game, so everybody has to hit, and she's just like, I'm just not going to hit. And so I'm like, well, we have to do it to complete the game. So I hit her first round of balls, like, just to, like, practice for my round. And then the second round, she's like, Paul, do you want to hit these balls? And then, like, all of a sudden, like, you were winning by a couple of points, but I was right behind you. But between us hitting her yeah. balls, <laughs> she was back in it. So then all of a sudden, the last round, she, like, gets up there, and she's like, I'm just going to aim for the first one because that's the easy one. I hate Top Golf too, so much <laughs> because there was at least – we talked about this last time because we're rusty. It's, yeah. It was literally the exact same thing. There were three or four times I would drive the ball straight into a hole. It wouldn't even count my score. And then they're like five (laughs) bouncing the ball into like the the sand over here. And it's like no one cares, Jeremy. No one cares. I'm glad I was hanging out with my friend Scott. Just saying. No, this. I just don't like to lose. No, it's. Yeah. It was getting to be a real scene. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) Natalie and Trey, this is going to be fun. Watch him and Penny get going. But then Penny, you know, bailed. And let everybody build her up. And let you win for me. So, and for you, Penny. Was, it was, that's how you play the game. Yeah. No, asterisk. That's like the biggest asterisk that was ever. A, that was a great strategy, Penny. That it was, was a like strategy. an asterisk and a half. Like, mm. Great strategy, Penny. Thank Just you, saying. April. I yeah. agree. That's how women do it. Yeah, that's how we do it. You let men do all the hard you work. Men do okay. men into right, the hard work. You, really yeah. you really did walk into that. <laughs> that there's America. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I feel like this is a good time to play the outro, but I want to say. April wasn't there, so she missed it. If you ever go to Top Golf, do your best not to fall into the net. Oh yeah, we found out. Did somebody fall in the no, net? No, but really? if you do, they're not allowed to help you out, and they have to call the fire department to pull you out of the net. So yeah, I told them that before because I'd actually seen somebody do it, and then I guess now it's a new policy. They told the guy told us, yeah, like because well, we had told him a couple people were new to Top Golf, and he's like, "Well, just don't fall down on the net because we can't help you out. We have to call the fire department to get you out." How do you fall? I'm trying to remember because we went. You can fall off the edge. I think okay. you have four or five top golf drinks and then you spin time. around when you oh, miss yeah. your driver and you go right. Into, you're aiming for that back fence and you just fall. I've seen clubs fall off from overhead, but I've never seen a person go into that net. But boy, I, I do should have think. pushed Penny on that last foot. I should have <laughs> when she started winning. I should have just pushed her in. Here, t- it wouldn't take much. Tell the, host, <laughs> tell the fire department where we're staying. You can drop her off. Yeah, <laughs> just, you staying. can take as much time as you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, the I, the I church almost that. disbanded that first night, but yeah. then we brought it back together and uh, we had a nice time. So thank you all for listening. Thank you, April, for being an amazing guest. Apparently, you're going to be back on every thank week you. is what I'm hearing. Uh, well, it's not every week. We only do every other week. <laughs> well, no, every, no, I mean, she can be on as much as she wants, but I'm not, we're not doing this every week. And Jeremy's like, <laughs> we're not bringing her back on. In the in no, between I think weeks, once a month, every other week, what she wants to feel like. We can do a podcast, April, where we can watch all the Hallmark movies and we can have oh. April's take. I That'll just be you and April. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> and it'll be the highest rated show in <laughs> Yeah. Love my Hallmark movies. No All shame. Right. Hey, I did that in my hotel room. It was great. I just sat on the bed, watched Hallmark, and didn't have to hear anybody say You didn't Hallmark. use the workout equipment? Did you see that? You know, <laughs> did home? I use the workout I watched so Sister Act, no. too. It was awesome. Yeah. And then they played the song at... Oh, yeah. They, so, they, so nobody I, were used their workout equipment in the room. I did some work stretching out with those bands because I've apparently hurt my traps. Listen, so that's I, what I did. I, I walked I to out. Starbucks. I did my cardio. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a hill. To get down the park. Thank you, lot. Paul. So, you know Thank what? you. did stay out of, at a workout hotel. <laughs> Only one I know. person did I know. something. They're like, what kind of hotel is it? I'm like, it's a wellness hotel, but yeah. yeah. That's a great <laughs> water in the lobby. Hotel. <laughs> it's hey, a workout I did take hotel. advantage of the, you do? the you great out water. At the hotel. Yeah. But yeah, no, sorry. You, what? The water was good down in the lobby. It was. It was great. I know. That's what I got. The, the coffee mint was good. I tried to get you to get the mint. You didn't do it, but it was good. No, mint can just stay out of my drink. It's good for gum and that's it. It's Maybe. great for your drink, too, just saying. It's not. Are you, is it mint and julep? Is that what you're shaking Ew, over there in your no. Stanley cup? Ugh. 
We didn't talk about the Derby, but, you know, we were wrapping it up, so it's good. All right. Okay. April, was good to see you. Thanks for getting us off on this tangent, and, you know, I'm sure you'll be back before Christmas this year again. Thanks, Paul. See ya.